Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to take a look at the difference between classes and structs in Swift. So it's important to understand the difference between these two since this question may come up in an iOS interview and also you want to make sure that you're using the correct one in your apps. So let's get straight into it. So let's create a new SwiftUI playground that you can see here and if you want to create a SwiftUI playground if you open up Xcode, file, new and then playground and within this we're actually going to start off by looking at structs. So a struct is a value type. What does this mean? It essentially means that if you create an instance of it, but when you modify its value in another property, it creates a new copy of itself rather than updating a reference to itself. So let's just see this in action now. So what I'm going to do is just delete this and then create a new struct called car. So now let's actually create an instance of this. So when I create an instance of car, you should notice that I actually automatically get the initializer handled for me. So when you're working with structs, unless you give that value a default value, it automatically creates an initializer for you. So you don't need to do that. So let's actually set this now. And I'm just going to say the card is an Audi. What we're going to do is actually update the miles in this car. So now when we run this in our SwiftUI playground, you can see here that it actually prints out our car and we updated this car to have the miles of two. So it's actually dumping out two rather than five. But what about if we actually wanted to create another copy of this variable and actually update this one here via our copy. So let's actually see what happens now. So I'm going to create a, another variable called car and then we're going to assign it my car. And then in your car, we're going to set the miles back to five. Looking at this, you may think that what's going to happen is my car is going to be set back to five rather than two. But let's actually just dump this out and see if they both match. Cool. So as you can see, they don't match. So what's happening here? Well, the reason for this is because it's the the reason for this is because of the way structs work. So when we assigned out our car to our new variable your car, it actually created a copy of my car. So within it, it actually created a copy of my car with the same values at that time. So on line 12, at this point in time, your car was actually two miles and my car was also two miles as well. But when we made a change to your car and we set the miles to five, it only updated this variable here and not this one. And that's because when you're working with structs, their value types. So with value types, when you actually assign it, it actually creates a copy of that object at that time and then you have a brand new object with a copy of what existed just then. So what about if we actually wanted to update our car with a function as well? How could we actually do that? When you're working with structs, you're able to write functions within them like so. So we just say increase. So when you're working with structs, you can write functions within them like this, but this won't work. And the reason why this won't work is because you're trying to update itself and structs are value type. So you're not actually able to change itself. So in order to actually make a change to itself, you need to use the mutating operator. So let's actually add this in. And now by us actually adding in the mutating operator, it now makes our struct mutable. So we're able to change it. So without this, our struct is immutable, but this allows you to update itself. Let's actually delete these lines and use our function instead. So I'm going to say I want my car to increase the miles by two here. And then I want your car to increase its miles by five. So let's run this and see what happens. So as you can see, again, we don't have the same values. So what's going on is we create our car, my car here and it has five miles. I increase it by two, so I get seven. Then we assign my car to your car and then we increase your car by five. So at this point, five plus two is seven. We create a copy of it. So it's actually seven when we create a copy of it in your car and then we increase it by five. So now it becomes 12. So you can see here that when you're working with structs, you actually don't get to update the same reference to it. But when you're working with classes, you do. So now let's actually see how this works. This kind of example works with a class. So I'm going to create a new class within here. So now let's actually create a person and you'll actually see before we even start trying to create a person, we actually have an error telling us that our class has no initializers. So when you're working with classes, it's not the same as structs. You don't get that automatic initializer for you. So you have to actually create it yourself. So now let's add this in. 
So we just put an initializer here like so, and then we're just going to say name. And then we need to actually set our name and our age. And now you should see that error goes away. So now let's create an instance of a person. So I'm going to create me. So now in me, let's actually change my age by one and then we'll just dump it out into the console to see what happens. So let's actually run this and see what happens. So now you can see here that when I create my person, my name tons, I update my age to 28. And you can see that's being dumped into the console. So this is similar to what was happening before when we were just dumping out the increase for our my car. But one thing to notice here is that if you actually look at me here, we're able to change the age of me even though we define it as a constant. And why is this? Well, remember what I said before, when you create an instance of a class, you can see here that the properties here is a var. So we're actually able to update a reference to that person's age. So let's actually create another person in here with a copy of me and we'll update their name and their age as well. So I'm just gonna do that now. So what we've got here is we've now got our new person and I've just updated their age and their name and I've just dumped them. And you can see when we actually dump him, you can see that we're actually getting an update to both me and new person. So this is the difference here in action between structs and classes. So we're actually updating a reference to new person. So when we actually assigned me to new person, it didn't actually create a new copy. Instead, it passed a reference of me in memory within new person. So the value inside of here is the same value within in here. And now whenever we make a change to new person and the name is also going to update this constant here as well as you can see here in the console. So one more thing that you might clock that I do in quite a bit of my videos when I'm creating a class is you'll see me doing something like this. When I say final class, like so. So the reason why we use this final keyword is so that you're not able to actually subclass this class. And what subclassing means is if you do something like this. So now what's going on is our teacher is now using the person as a subclass. So now this teacher actually inherits everything that's inside of here. So if I actually wanted to, I could actually write a function in here. And you'll see I'm now able to access the person's name and also I'm able to access the person's age as well. So by subclassing, we're able to access properties within that class. So this is very good for stuff like polymorphism, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, but if you just check it out, you'll see use cases of where it's used. So this subclassing that we have here as well, you're not actually able to use this with structs as well. So this is something that's only available with classes and it's kind of used when you're working with object oriented programming. That's the main difference between structs and classes and how they work. And you may be wondering now, why and when do I actually want to use either when I'm working in Swift UI or just put an iOS application? Well, in my opinion, what you want to do is that if you're working with a simple data model, nine times out of 10, you probably want this to be a struct. And the reason for this is because you don't really need to create a reference of this data model. It's just data that you're going to be showing on the screen. You don't need a reference to it. But if you actually want some kind of object that you can actually use to pass around your app and you need to observe and keep alive for as long as your app is, you know, in the foreground, nine times out of 10, you actually want to use a class since this allows you to keep a reference of it in memory for usage later within it. And if you actually make a change to it, you won't get copies. Instead, you'll just get an update to a reference to it in memory. And if you want to learn more about this, then you can actually check out my videos about classes and structures called easy ways to create data models in Swift UI and how to build a view model with a class. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.